Hello and welcome to my talk titled Diabetes Care Systems, Pen Plus Decentralizing Diabetes Care. As you can see from the slide, my name is Dr. Stephen James and I'm from the University of the Sunshine Coast in Australia. I would like to begin by thanking the organizing committee for inviting me to talk on this uh, very important uh, topic. And uh, as you can see from the slide here, I have no conflicts of interest to declare. So non-communicable diseases or NCDs as I'll refer to them uh, from here on in for ease. Uh, as I'm sure you're aware, NCDs uh, is or are an umbrella term that uh, encompasses many unique um, diseases such as heart diseases, cancer, diabetes, asthma, sickle cell disease, amongst them many others. Severe NCDs are those chronic conditions that result in significant loss of healthy life and death for affected individuals if left undiagnosed or untreated. So with all of this in mind, I think it's fair to say NCDs are an important consideration. According to the World Health Organization, NCDs are the main cause of morbidity and mortality globally. They account for an estimated 71% of global mortality. Now I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about uh, Africa. I'm fully aware that the venue here is India, but it is important that I talk about Africa first off so as to set the scene. I'll certainly talk about India later. So Africa has a very high burden of NCDs. In the African region, the proportion of mortality due to NCDs is estimated to range from around 27 to 88%. Cardiovascular diseases, cancer, diabetes, and chronic respiratory diseases account for 70% of the burden of NCDs in the region. Now I'm sure that you've heard these statistics many times throughout the meeting, but according to the Diabe International Diabetes Federation's 2021 Diabetes Atlas, there are an estimated 24 million adults living with diabetes um, around the world. Even more alarming, by 2045, the total number of people with diabetes are projected to increase 129% to 55 million. With such figures in mind, I think it's perhaps unsurprising that mortality from NCDs has increased over the years in the African region. The share of NCDs in total mortality increased from 24.2% of deaths in 2000 to 37.1% in 2019. So although this talk is focused on diabetes, I, I do feel it's important just to spend a minute or so just highlighting the impact of sickle cell disease. Uh, more than 66% of the 120 million people affected worldwide by sickle, sickle cell disease live in Africa. An estimated 1,000 children are thought to be born with the disease every day in Africa, and this makes it the most prevalent genetically acquired disease in the uh, region. Finally, um, according to a 2019 World Health Organization survey, only an estimated 36% of countries in the African region reported having essential medicines for NCDs in public hospitals. Now, while there's undoubtedly been progress in the prevention and care of communicable diseases, primary health care facilities, more commonly known as health centers, which are generally the first point of contact between the population and the health system, often do not have the capacity nor the basic equipment and even medicines to manage chronic and severe NCDs. As part of the district health system, district hospitals are the main referral facility at the district level. They provide administrative oversight to first level care facilities and other health institutions within the district. However, the reality is that these district hospitals or referral general hospitals are not usually able to manage chronic and severe NCDs. Now with all this in mind, Healthcare services for severe NCDs are usually provided at tertiary facilities in most countries. This is problematic because it exacerbates health inequalities and contributes to the high premature mortality from NCDs in the region. For many years now, for the past 14 or so years since 2008, um, the World Health Organization has been providing support to member states 
to implement the WHO or World Health Organization package of essential NCD interventions for primary health care in low resource settings. And this is a package that's been termed WHO-PEN. The aim of this initiative has been to provide decentralized and integrated management of common NCDs at the primary health care level. This is in addition to strengthening the capacity for referrals. And this um, is really of great importance to reduce premature mortality from NCDs. Now, as I mentioned, regional strategies aim to address the burden of severe NCDs among rural and unreached populations through decentralized, integrated outpatient services in first level referral health facilities. Essentially, it offers solutions to bridge the gap in access to care for people with severe NCDs. Uh, and the guiding uh, principles include a whole of government approach, multi-sectoral collaboration, universal health coverage and partnerships. Uh, this strategy proposes priority interventions covering training and mentoring of staff, resource mobilization, multi-sectoral action, service delivery, data collection, uh, what else, uh, innovation and research. So the strategy also proposes approaches to improve efficiency by providing standardized protocol-based management of severe NCDs. Before I move on to the next slide, I had neglected to mention earlier, and it's quite important, but um, NCDs account for most of the out-of-pocket spending of patients in Africa as well. Through offering NCD care as a package of services available at primary and district health facilities, the hope is that patients will find their expenses decrease as they spend less money on aspects such as transportation and lodging in cities and less time commuting to the health facilities wherever they may be. Okay, so the PEN Plus initiative. So this initiative is based on the World Health Organization or, or WHO package of essential EC, uh, NCD interventions, WHOPEN that I talked about earlier, encourages encouraging the decentralization of NCD services. So the plus here in plus pen indicates the inclusion of other severe NCDs. Essentially, um, African health ministers launched a campaign to increase awareness and in include some more severe NCDs that mostly affect young people, with particular reference to sickle cell disease, which was deemed to receive inadequate attention. And obviously I talked about sickle cell disease uh, a few slides back. Uh, the plan was endorsed by health ministers of African countries at the 72nd session of the World Health Organization Regional Committee for Africa, and that was in Togo. Uh, to reduce premature mortality from NCDs. Um, since its formation, the PEN Plus strategy has been successfully implemented and scaled up in many countries globally. Uh, in Africa, these include countries such as Malawi, uh, Libya, and uh, Rwanda. Uh, and there's, there's, there's much evidence demonstrating significant improvement in the number of patients accessing services in such countries. So here we can see a figure which depicts uh, diagnostic and also treatment services for um, endocrine here, which is here in the red, as well as cardiac and hemoglobinopathy conditions at referral hospitals, first level hospitals, PEN plus, and health centers. So here you can see um, we have from a, a endocrine, the red point of view, um, we have um, early suspicion, good physical examination uh, and referral. And here at the first level hospital, we have glucose and A1C measurement, chemistries for DKA diagnosis, and this is done under the diagnostic services umbrella. We also have similar things at on the treatment services uh, umbrella or arm as well. Here you can see referrals go backwards and forwards between the different centers, but we have very much a training uh, from the top down, from the specialists, all the way down to um, the, the, the health center, the who pen. Okay. So uh, the Lancet Commission on uh, reframing NCDs and uh, injuries for the poorest billion, um, the Lancet NCDI Poverty Commission, uh, that was the catalyst for the formulation of the NCDI Poverty Network, which was formed to reframe the 
NCD agenda in the interests of equity so that global financing and policy making institutions can uh, more fully or better uh, address the needs of the poorest patients in low income countries. The Lancet Commission inspired the establishment of national NCDI poverty commissions and groups in 23 low and lower middle income countries that are home to almost half of the world's poorest billion people. Uh, new national commissions uh, conduct analysis to assess their national NCDI burden among the poorest and to identify and prioritize policies, interventions and integrated delivery platforms that would effectively address and reduce that burden. National commissions also participate in a series of knowledge exchanges, engaging with presentations and discussion of topics critical to addressing NCDI poverty. And that's uh, via webinars um, organized and hosted by the NCDI Poverty Network uh, co-secretariat. So here on this slide, uh, you can see participation as of October 2022. I won't spend too much time on this slide, but you can see lots of activity, not only in Africa, but in certain parts of uh, South Asia and Southeast Asia. Um, so it's a lot uh, being done. Okay, so uh, moving, to, uh, moving on to India. So in India, the four major NCDs are cardiovascular diseases, chronic respiratory diseases, cancers, and diabetes. Um, unfortunately, nearly 5.8 million people are, are estimated to die from NCDs every year. And if this figure isn't powerful enough, uh, in other words, one in four Indians has a risk of dying from an NCD before they reach the age of 70. Further, it's, uh, it's been reported that there is an increase in the contribution of NCDs from 30% of the total disease burden, and that's Disability Adjusted Life Years, or DALYSs, in 1990. So that's 30% in 1990, up to 55% in 2016. There's also been an increase in the proportion of deaths due to NCDs among all deaths, from 37% in 1990 to 61% in 2016. So if we solely focus on type 1 diabetes, uh, the st statistics are just as uh, horrifying. Uh, data from the type 1 diabetes index of care, and if anyone isn't aware of um, this resource, I'd recommend you search for this on the web. T1D Index of Care. It's a fantastic initiative involving entities such as the uh, Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation and Life for a Child. Uh, the index essentially measures and maps how many people live uh, with type 1 diabetes in every country, the healthy years of life it takes from people living with type 1 diabetes, the number of people who would still be alive today if they hadn't died prematurely from type 1 diabetes complications and global strategies to reduce its impact. So I accessed the data a few days ago, and in India, an estimated 860,000 people or so are living with type 1 diabetes, and just over 902,000 people should still be alive today if they hadn't uh, died early due to complications from, um, from type 1 diabetes, the condition. 45 years of life are lost per person, and this uh, statistic is really an estimate of the time lost to ill health, disability, or early death from living with type 1 diabetes. And it, it presents a more complete picture of the burden of type 1 diabetes, including treatment, doctor visits, and other management activities. Okay, so when we're looking at uh, strategies, um, first off, I have to uh, just clarify, I mean, just be a bit upfront. Uh, India has adopted many, many strategies to reduce NCDs, and the truth is, it's beyond the scope of this presentation to uh, discuss all of these. Um, but I mean, from a Pen Plus perspective, um, in response to the, the the World Health Organization or WHO's Global Action Plan for the Prevention and Control of NCDs 2013 to 2020, India was the first country to uh, was the first country to adopt the National Action Plan with specific national targets and indicators aimed at reducing the number of global premature deaths from NCDs by 25% by 2025. And I'm sure many of you are um, still part or part of that. 
Um, so that really concludes my uh, presentation. Um, I'm not uh, available on site. Um, this is obviously this is a recording, and um, basically I was unavailable due to other commitments and timing. But um, if you do have any questions, because I won't be around for the question or, or question time or panel discussion, but if you do have any questions, uh, please email me at the email address there, sjames1 at usc.edu.au, um, and I'll be more than happy to liaise with you from there on in. Thank you.